Greetings all, Dr. X here, good to see ya. All right, today's mini lecture is all about research. In particular, I'll talk with you about pulling samples from minority populations and how you can use snowball sampling in order to make that a little easier for you. Stay tuned. Okay, the mini lecture today is about research methods sample selection with minority population. So I'll be explaining what population means and what sample means and talking a little bit about snowball sampling as one of the ways in which you can select your population. All right, so this is just a quick reminder of what the research process is. So the research process follows the scientific research method. Um, step one, is that you define a topic or a problem. Step two, you review all relevant research. So as you're conducting research on your master's thesis or dissertation, you'll be going and spending a significant amount of time doing background research for your research study. You'll formulate your research question or questions, and then you'll select your research method. So based on your research question, we'll help you be able to choose whether you should be using quantitative research methods or if you should be using qualitative. Now, once you've determined the research method, then what you do is you define, you design and define your research study. Part of the definition of that study is telling us about your population selection and what the representative sample will be from that population for your research. I'll talk a little bit more about sample in a minute, but a sample really is a group of systematically chosen people who represent a much larger group of study. And I'll get more into that in just a minute. Then you'll collect your data, analyze the data, and draw conclusions and present a report based on your analysis. Today, I'm not gonna go into all of the steps of the research process. We'll cover that at different times as we're working together. For right now, I am going to talk specifically about the design of your study when it comes to population selection and then sampling from that population. As you're going through and designing your research study, the most important thing you can do is define what your research question is. Now your research question should drive everything about your study, including the populations that you select for your research. So as you're talking about the what, the why, the when, the where, the how, all of it, the who really is driven along with all the rest of it by what you define as your research question. In other words, you wanna pick the population for your research that will help you answer your research questions. Then what is the population? So when I start talking to you and asking you, who is your research population? I'm not talking specifically about your sample yet. What I'm talking about is who are the members of the larger group that make up your research population? So an example may be, let's say that you wanna do research on the experiences of African-American full-time faculty members at colleges and universities in California. Well, the larger group is all African-American women. Now, as we drill down to defining your sample, it is the sample you will be pulling from that larger group. So remember that as we're defining sample, a sample is a group of systematically chosen people who represent the much larger group of the study. In the example I gave, the sample from the larger population would be all African-American women who are full-time faculty members at colleges and universities in the state of California. So that would be your representative sample for your research study. Hey, how's the video going for you so far? If you're learning something new about research, how about hitting the thumbs up button for me and subscribing to the channel? That will help the YouTube algorithm to push these kinds of videos that I'm making out to more people who need the research help. Thanks so much in advance for doing it. And now back to the lecture. So then how do you gather that sample? How do you engage with that sample so that you can conduct interviews, 
You can do in-depth interviewing with them, whatever your research methods and your data collection method that you choose, how do you first get in touch with that group and be able to ask them to participate in your study? Well, if you were doing a quantitative research study, what you do is do what we call random sampling. Not going to talk about that right now because most of this is for the most of the people that are working with me. Most of you will be working on qualitative research methods. What we use in qualitative methods is what's called purposeful sampling. And so you may, if you already have a well-defined sample, you may already have people that you know in that sample that you can purposely pull from because it's convenient or because they're more readily accessible. However, if you have populations that you don't have a ready sample available for, sometimes snowball sampling really can make a huge difference for you to be able to access the uh, participants for your study. Then what is snowball sampling? Well, Snowball sampling is a recruitment technique that allows some research participants to refer or recruit other potential subjects to a research study. So in other words, participants in the research study share with other people about your research and they refer people back to you to participate in the research study. And so an example of this would be the research that I did for my dissertation. I researched the experiences of African-American women faculty members in, uh, that were faculty members in the American Southwest. Well, as you might imagine, there weren't a large populations of African-American women in the Southwest that were full-time faculty members. And so I would share with the participants that I did find that I was looking for other uh, African-American women faculty and could they refer them to me? I also shared with my hairdresser and let her know what my research study was and that I was having problems finding uh, women that qualified to be in the sample. And she said, oh, oh, Zatura, I know quite a few women that might meet that. Let me get your information and I'll give it to them. And so she passed it on to them. As they were contacting me, I was able to fill out my research study um, with a lot of snowball sampling um, from my research made all the difference in the world for me to be able to get done. So having your participants in your research study help you identify people in that hidden uh, population, it establishes levels of trust uh, between you and the participants. And because they already have cultural capital with women in their community or people in their community, them referring them over to you can make a huge difference for you to be able to get research subjects for your study. So that is what snowball sampling is. And it really can make a difference, especially if you're working with minority or hidden populations. Speaking of minority and other hidden populations, I'd say that the use of snowball sampling allows increased access to individuals or groups that may otherwise remain inaccessible. It is a sampling technique that allows researchers access to hidden and marginalized populations. And I'll leave a link in the description of this video below so that you can access an article that I've written specifically, that I've published specifically about using snowball samplings and the difference it really does make with marginalized populations um, when you're doing research. I'll, I'll end with this final thing. One final point is that human subjects review boards are so critical and vital when it comes to conducting research with human subjects. Now, minority populations have been um, deemed vulnerable populations by most instructional or human subjects review boards. And so uh, it's critical, vitally important that before you start and conduct any research, with human subjects, uh, whether they're minority populations or not, it's critical and vital that you have to pass your human subjects review before beginning that research. Now, those of you working with me on your master's theses and on your dissertations, there will be no 
research with anyone. You will not conduct your interviews. You will not sit down and have a chat. None of it until everything's been approved by the IRB committee at the institution. Um, it, we just run too many risks of doing harm to people. And so the IRB um, review helps to identify those areas you might not have even thought about that could be problematic and do harm to someone else. So mo remember, most research institutions have human subject review boards and they take a look at every part of your research, including research questions and interview questions if you're doing interviews, like every part of your research to ensure that there will be no harm done to the research um, subjects, to your participant. Okay, that's it for this week's lecture. Thanks so much for watching and have a terrific week.